Let's bring it on home. Why do we think Earth is so, so special? Is it? Is it special? Is it unique? Hmm. You ever think of that? You ever ponder that question? There are a few reasons that do make Earth very unique. We have an atmosphere rich in oxygen. Other atmospheres have oxygen. Ours just tends to be more rich in oxygen. We have a hydrosphere, water, uh, that contains water as solid, liquid, or vapor gas. We're one of the only planets that have water in all three of those phases. So atmosphere rich in water, water, or atmosphere rich in oxygen, excuse me, uh, water in all phases, solid, liquid, and gas. We have a biosphere full of living organisms. Now, as of now, we are the only planet that we know of uh, that has living organisms, but that's as far as we can state. We can't state definitively we're the only planet with life. Well, there's a lot of planets out there that we don't quite know if there is or is not yet, so we can't say that. But for what we know, for now, we are the only planet full of living organisms. Something called uh, weathering. Uh, we have the chemical alteration and breaking down of rocks, mostly tied to the, the water cycle and the atmosphere. Uh, and we also have something called regolith. Regolith, which is kind of the blanket of loose soil covering the earth. Soil is a mixture of rock and organic material. That's why soil and dirt are kind of two different things. And earth is constantly changing. Now, individually, other planets exhibit this, some of these things, at least with, with the exception of the biological living organisms that we know of now. Other planets have an atmosphere with oxygen. Other planets have water in all of its phases, or at least some of its phases. Other uh, planets have um, surfaces where the rocks are broken down. Since we're the only planet that we know of that has living organisms, not quite sure if there's soil on other planets. Uh, and other planets are changing as well. But when you add all of these up together, we're kind of the unique in having all of these at once. So Earth is a very dynamic system. It really is. It's a thing on its own. But it's uniform in its processes. It changes. It constantly changes but it's uniform in the way that it does so. And that leads to an idea in geology, say it with me now, called uniformitarianism. That's right. You remember back in section two or three, it's proposed by James Hutton, um, and it kind of states that the processes, go processes governing the Earth systems today have operated in similar manner throughout geologic time. Earthquakes happen today, they happened in the past. Volcanoes happen today, they happened in the past. Which again, seems very, well, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but it, it helps us to explain now that we can look back in the rock record and different rocks and fossils, if we know that the processes are the same, we can now kind of put a timeline and figure stuff out in the past based on types of rocks, types of fossils, the environment in which certain things were forming in. So it kind of it, so this idea of uniformitarianism is is a, a, a central part of of geology, and to understand the past, we just got to look at what we see in the present. We don't have to take a time machine back in time. We just look to see what's happening now. What can we look at now? I can look at a rock now, but knowing that that rock is two billion years old. Okay. Well, even though I'm looking at it now in the present, it's the key to telling me what happened in the past. Knowing the type of rock, I can figure out the the environment where that rock formed in, which helps me to infer something about the Earth. So, even though most of geology is studying the past, we just got to look at what's in the present. The present is the key to the past. Thank you, James Hutton. So again, volcanoes, they happen now, they happen in the past. Earthquakes, they happen now, they happen in the past. Weathering and erosion and the breaking down of rocks, they happen now, happened in the past. Thinking along these terms, we can kind of reconstruct the past, knowing just a little bit of information about geology. <clears throat> so uh, again, one, one thing that makes Earth unique, well, th there's a number of things there. Other planets exhibit this, but Earth's plates are constantly and slowly moving over time. 
While he was previously unknown to us, this really didn't evolve until this past century, the 1900s. And in fact, it wasn't until like the mid-1900s that the idea of continental drift made its way to plate tectonic theory. And we actually understood that plates, the Earth is made up of plates and they move around. It wasn't but 60, 70 years ago. So if you have some grandparents that are older than that, their view on how the Earth works is way different than how the Earth works. You know, we discovered something. Geology, you know, it took some time. It took some time to, to, to get stuff figured out because it how slow it moves. You know? So, uh, but nowadays with technology, you know, if we had that a long time ago, we could have figured this out much sooner. GPS, we can now watch and measure the motion of the Earth's plates and how they're moving and jostling and crashing into one another or pulling apart. Plate tectonics. Again, Uniformitarianism, if it's happening now, it happened in the past. So plate tectonics can be a driver of many different things. Uh, as defined, plate tectonics is the movement and interactions of large plates of Earth's crust. There are uh, about a dozen or so large plates and many smaller plates that make up the crust of the Earth that all jostle around. More on that next unit. But plate tectonics, this process, is responsible for shaping continents. And the reason they are the shape they are is because of plate tectonics. Volcanoes and earthquakes wouldn't be a thing if this if plates were not moving around. <clears throat> so thank you, Changing Earth, for, for doing all this. When we're talking about the crust of the Earth, there's actually two different types of crust that the Earth is made up of. Uh, oceanic crust, which is a younger, thinner, more dense, heavier crust. And then you have continental crust. That's the stuff we're standing on. It's older, thicker, less dense, lighter. You'll know the difference between the two. If you're standing on it, it's continental crust. Any of the solid stuff under the ocean, oceanic crust. Just the way it all works out. So here's an image of it. I think I can annotate. So here we have, uh, yeah, here we have Yes, no, maybe. Oh, yeah, continental crust. Here we have oceanic crust. Notice how thick the continental crust is. Thicker, lighter, meaning uh, less dense, lighter. So it actually floats above the oceanic crust. Um, so it's thicker, but lighter. So it doesn't matter how much it is. If it's less dense, it's going to float above something else. So thicker, lighter, older, oceanic crust, thinner, more dense, heavier. Uh, and younger. And when these interact, since if you have an oceanic, uh, a plate made up of oceanic crust heading this way, and a, a, a plate made up of continental crust heading this way, they're colliding. Since the oceanic crust is heavier, more dense, not that it's, um, not that it's uh, bigger, but just it's more dense, it's going to get pushed down while the lighter stuff is going to uh, follow, flow on top. So it's this interaction that's responsible for Earthquakes, volcanoes. Now, what's driving this? What's causing these plates to move? Well, that's what we're going to get into next unit. What's causing all of this? The outcome of this? The different way plates move? Plates are sometimes made up of both continental and oceanic crust. Looking at what type of crust is interacting at a particular plate boundary can help us determine different geologic um, uh, things about a certain area. So all of this stuff will be kind of talked about next unit. Just a brief introduction just to let you know where we're going. We're going to play around in that plate tectonic cycle. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end. It's been my honor. It's been my pleasure. Don't forget about that super secret code. You may need it in the very near future. There, are, there will be a, a question or questions at the end of each uh, lecture, so make sure you're answering those. Um, yeah. If you have any questions or any issues, please let me know. Uh, any questions about the material, please save for, um, for class time. We will kind of go over this material in class. You will be utilizing uh, some of this knowledge that you gained, even at a very basic level. Um, so make sure you pay attention to these lecture videos. I'll see you next time.